Hey everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week is not going to be a walkthrough, I'm just going to do a little video on check layers. So last week when I uploaded the uh, goat in a boat image, uh, people were asking me about the group what was at the top of the layers panel and also on the previous image as you what's on the screen now on the final image on the video people are asking about the group which I kept, kept clicking on and off so the group at the top was this and this is a group full of check layers and what check layers are are help layers uh, which you can turn on and turn off and it helps you pinpoint the colours in the image and the saturation uh, hue and saturation the tonal uh, contrast of the image and also your yeah, light and dark point. Now before we start let's let, let me just say that this is this one here this check group was not actually created by me it's a action that I downloaded from Flern so and it's free so feel free to go and get your free uh, action from Flern I'm sure they'd be happy that you all downloaded it so let me just kind of go in and explain a little on how these work. So I'll start with the easiest first, which is this channel mixer here, which when you turn on, turns the image to black and white. Turn off, on. So what this does is it changes your image to black and white. So when you're creating composites, uh, what you want to do first is try and match the, the contrast and the lights and the darks of the image, because if you have, say if you had uh, this bottle here composited in and it was uh, dark, and then you have this one but it was lighter next to it it's harder to see sometimes when the image is in color so when you switch it to black and white you can think oh that one's a little bit darker and then separately you can adjust the tonal contrast of this image here so it matches the thing next to it also it works similar within any kind of element you bring in you always need to match the lights and darks and the contrast of the image uh, so that they all blend in so that's the easy one, that's the channel mixer here. So next we are going to go into this one, sorry. So this, when you switch this one on, this is saturation. So again, when you create a composite, you're trying to create a scene that's believable, so you want everything to have the same saturation. As you, uh, uh, so how, it, how this check layer tells you that is, is the more red something is, the more saturated it is. Uh, and it's a little bit hard when you look at it like this but if you click this one above it takes away all the detail and just kind of leaves the saturation just keeps the saturation of the image in the areas as you can see here the bottle, this bottle here is not very saturated the D is not very saturated so let's just go down and see if I turn some of the layers back on on the deer that I did begin of the image if it begins becomes more saturated as you can see when I click those two layers on it becomes more saturated obviously because the sun is coming from this direction though and hitting the this the back side of the deer as you can see it's mainly along the rim of the deer uh, so let's see if I can change the saturation on something else so you can see so look at this as you can see as a click these are the hue saturation layers and what I've done is just started to match the saturation the reds of this uh, rock here. With the saturation of the background. So let's go up and we will go on to the next. Uh, check layer. So if you turn that one off, the saturation disappears and all that you're left with is the hues of the image. So the hues is the various shades of colour. So again, when you're creating a composite, you want to match the hues of the, the separate elements. So as you can see, I've, I've turned the layers off again so you can see what it looks like when you first bring them in. And for example, these bottle because this deer is in shade, it, it doesn't actually want the same hue as this bit here, but it does kind of want the same hue as the shadow areas around here. And same with the bottles. What you can do as well to pinpoint, pinpoint that even more is if you're wanting to 
adjust the saturation and the hue and I'll see the saturation of the colors again you can click this one above the hue saturation and you get to see the color and the saturation together so let's just click this one on and let's see I've played around with the bottle uh, the hue of the bottle So as you can see I brought in different various uh, colours from the composite uh, from the background and added them in. Let's just uh, go down again. So I'll bring in more of the, of the purple in as well a little bit into the bottles. So let me just turn these off and then I'll show you in real time kind of what's happening. So let's go back down. Again, because these are all slight adjustments, sometimes it can it can be hard to see. Like there's no dramatic effects because in composite, I always believe you little adjustments are best. Don't just make dramatic adjustments on all your all, all your separate elements, uh, little by little. You just need to make little adjustments. There you can see the last one. I'm gonna bring that last hue shift in that's when it matches up with the colour of the sun here and finally you've got your threshold which just is very helpful to find the the light point and the dark point of your images it's uh, obviously with this image uh, I believe the let's have a look this area here is going to be the kind of the brightest area the centre This is this is the checkler I tend to use the least. I do use it now and again, but I think you get a better overall feel, better overall feel of where your eye is being drawn to when you when you look at an image. So that's just a quick rundown of the check layers. So again, you can download it from Flurn for free, and I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to create them yourselves or how to well somewhere to download them from but for composite artists I think it is it's it is a very helpful tool to help you create but more believable composites so let's go through then threshold so that's your light and dark point you've got your hue saturation if you click on this you get a better view of the hue sorry the colours and then you have your saturation again you press this it gives you even better view of the situation and then you have the channel mixer which turns the image to black and white which helps you match the dark and light and the contrasts of each element so I mean you might not have heard of these ones here but I hopefully I think I hope you are working in black and white when you are trying to match the contrasts uh, and tonal values of your separate elements and composites uh, and if not hopefully this is uh, this will help you in creating more believable composites by using these little tricks. So like I said, just a quick one this week. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you. And remember to leave some comments under the video so I can uh, get a conversation going with everyone. I like, I like answering the questions you've been leaving recently. It's really good. Uh, I'd like to build a, a community on this YouTube channel. And I wanna say actually as well, before I forget, I want to say a big thank you because I've actually reached over a thousand subscribers now and the last video they got on a boat uh, hit the 2.4 thousand uh, minutes watched and that was in one week so I just want to say a big thank you to Will and I hope you're finding these videos informational thanks guys PEACE